bringing the tone down somewhat and being somewhat mindful uh, and whatever and somewhat respectful, I have to have to mention this. I really, really have to mention this because I feel like this is really tragic news. It's regarding the one and only silent servant and um, one half of flipping or a, a part of a trio of um, Sandwell District unfortunately has passed away silent servant r.i.p silent servant this is a really tragic story um i just saw it on the interwebs on my side of the internet the other day and people are talking about it on all parts of the internet from instagram comments to reddits and stuff on the Bergheim community reddit i see people talking about it on twitter it's kind of really kind of grabbed people and really surprised people because you know i just i don't think they saw it coming and considering that how much of a great guy he is and well respected from people in the industry it's just really sad to see i'm such a an event and obviously even worse when you read the details of it so let's read the story it's a silent servant techno artist and sandwell district member dies um a los angeles based dj and producer john juan mendez also known as silent servant has died Mendez management trial Aid agency um, confirmed the news in an email sent to resident advisor uh, today in triangle is one of the biggest agencies we have in electronic dance music if you know you know january 19th the cause of death hasn't wasn't disclosed but Mendez partner simon ling or no simone ling and Vas and luis vasquez aka dark web musician the soft moon are believed to have died in the same incident so these are ebm legends if you know anything about electronic body music and you know anything about electronic adjacent no, electro adjacent music you would have known about flipping silent servant amazing music and i think sandwell district i would describe as like the best outro in best intro outro dj mix music you could find it's a really dumb thing to say and maybe reduces their artistry a bit but with full respect like they made some of the best intro and outro dj mix music you could ever make or like stuff that you want to make to kind of clear the dance floor a lot of djs will talk about oh like we have i play some tunes that i want to reset the dance floor with because that's a really important part of djing it's always not like to kind of have the tempo always at maximum 100 you sometimes want to calm it down a little bit and like get people give people a chance to get a drink to go to the bathroom whatever it may be and sometimes those tracks are a good way to kind of get people just reset and calm again i think southern district made some of that best type of stuff but him personally as flipping silent servant some of the best ebm ever and of course soft moon as well really really crazy and obviously um mendez's partner simone link so imagine him his partner and um silent moon all passed away at the same time a prominent figure in electronic music for over 30 years la-based mendez is best known for as a member of the era defining collective sandor district alongside regis femal and function um after sandor district disbanded in 2011 mendez launched jealous good i'm um, sorry jealous god label with regis and james ruskin releasing records from the likes of varg faith fatal and black merlin Mendes' own music came out on labels such as Citrax, Byte, um, BTA or Byte, um, Hospital Productions. His final solo record, November EP, In Memoriam, released through Trezor. A new Sound of District compilation where next will be announced later this week. Yeah, I think that's meant to be dropped drop in February, if I'm not mistaken. They've got Sound of District soon coming out in February. On the on the DJ front, Mendes was a regular at some of the world's best clubs, including Berghain, Ber Basayani in Georgia, Kihidi, and is scheduled to perform at Phoenix in Arizona tonight. Mendes was also a huge fan of New Wave, Minimal Synth, industrial music genres he would all regularly play on his monthly NTS radio show. Away from music, he was an experienced art director, photographer. Read some of the tributes below. And one of the really crazy things as well, if I'm remembering correctly, he had one of the best ever, and I think you should really check it out. It must have been like early 2000s or maybe 2010, 2011, I think around then. He had one of the best, one of the best boiler rooms ever. And this was the era when that guy, um, Mikael, was a presenter of boiler room. Because even, you know, he, sometimes he was a bit annoying to kind of see on screen because he was always kind of involved right trying to keep people back away but he was like he's trying to be a center of attention but to be honest looking back he was really he did mark one of the best eras in boiler room that guy he was a host right that mikhail guy and especially during the boiler room in berlin those were the first times i think a lot of people got to see what the scene was like in there and how people actually rave and have a good time they don't really care about the camera they're just going for it there's one of the best ever boiler rooms he ever did was the one in 2010 i think 2011 with silent servant so check it out on, on youtube if you haven't already incredible mix all i think majority of it's on vinyl maybe some of cdjs and i think it was in um i think that might be prince prince alexandra or something i forgot the venue maybe it's one of those venues i've got it's the one with maybe it's prince or maybe it's not maybe it's not maybe it's trezor I'm not too sure what the venue is but it's an amazing mix check it out if you want to give him a tribute and for me i'm definitely gonna play um death of decadence 
unfortunate name actually track wise but i think that's going to be a good way to kind of you know me remember him as my um sort of like tune of the day but obviously you're going to read some of the tributes from him as well from some of your friends who've kind of posted tributes on the end of this resident advisor article and then of course i'm going to um, read some other tributes that i found on the good old twitter so um to start off with we've got devastated to hear about the passing of wan from this is racial grace Al almeida big up her i think she's a writer at um crack magazine if i'm not mistaken or one of those magazines um silent servant louis surf moon um two latino artists whose legacies and contributions to techno dark wave and industrial were synthesized by the very fact mourning their losses today and every day pan says one silent servant one of the kindest souls we, enc we encountered in music and beyond an incredibly sad loss Momo Reddy says, rest in peace, silent servant. DJ um, Intercity Disco says, shocking news about Joanne, Sil Joanne Silent Servant, who f funneled so many, so much incredible, often half forgot music into our lives. By all accounts, a good man. That's something as well that you think is really good too, is all the people coming out and paying tribute to how much of a good dude he is. I've spoken about the music because I don't really, I don't know the guy personally, never met him. I did have a chance to see him play at Fabric. One of the things that was really disappointing, he never came to London too much. I don't know why really. Um, I remember seeing him in Fabric like, might have been 2018 or something like that. I forgot what, what year that was. And he was incredible. But he never came to London or England a lot. He kind of played a lot in Europe and North America. I'm not too sure why that was, but incredible artist. So it's good to see people talking about him as a person. Like, I just know him for the music, but people are saying, nah, he was actually a really good dude. So it's really cool to hear that. Another person says here, Silent Servant was one of the nearest people I've ever met. They're wrong when, they're, when they say, never meet your idols. He was nothing but lovely to me. When we talk backstage, devastating lots for the dance community i hear a lot of people saying this because i think he's based in the la dance community a lot of people are saying he's definitely a big loss to them boys noise says damn all right damn damn why am i saying damn damn r.i.p one silent servant heartbreaking news that he his wife and soft moon have died i only met one a handful of times i was a huge fan of all his music dj sets he inspired so many of us i'll never forget our back-to-back -back. deepest condolences to his family and friends another one ace ace mo R.I.P. Silent Servant Company. Um, remember doing sound a couple of times with him in BK. Many condolences. And then if we switch over to Twitter. We've got a few people here posting a lot of tributes as well. Um, and this person says, this Silent Servant soft moon situation is so fucking tragic. Streets are saying it was something laced with fentanyl. Drugs have been contributed to the creation of some incredible art, but they've taken so much more. Do us um, to them, uh, Simon Simone Ling and their families, right? So there's a big conversation around how he passed away and especially his partner and obviously soft moon. And one of the tragic things is that we've learned from the lot of people speaking about in the scene that most likely it was because of cocaine laced with, laced with fentanyl, which has been an epidemic that's been kind of plaguing, you know, most parts of North America. Fortunately for us in Europe, it hasn't necessarily come over here too much. We don't really have the fentanyl issue, but um, the fentanyl issue for some reason has absolutely decimated the US. And it's so tragic because it seems to be really, really lethal. And if you do your research, you do your readings, you'll know that the main reason why a lot of dealers are using fentanyl is because it's really cheap, but it obviously has a high ability to, you know, make people addicted. More so than opioids, opioids, sorry. So the common opioids that they would use to cut some of the drugs, they don't use it. So they prefer to use fentanyl because it's cheaper and it obviously um, can make people more addicted. And sometimes I've read it can make the drug more potent. Like if you put it in certain doses, um, you can actually make, or if you lace it a certain way, you can make the drug itself more potent. So you can either lace it to be more addictive or lace it to be more potent. I guess it's the same thing. But obviously in lethal doses, especially if it's not measured out properly, especially the surface of the area where they're doing the drugs or cleaning or putting it together and packing isn't done properly then of course it can be lethal and you know in ways that you know three people died at the same time taking that sort of shit and if i'm not mistaken the other tragic part of it which is even more horrific is the fact that um he was found a day later or something by his brother or something which is you can't imagine how that must have been for the brother to see that scene so all that being said it's really disgusting when you see people um specific people involved in that scene who are talking bad about the guy after he passed away and you know there's no point in even highlighting who it was because i think most people who are in the know will know but like imagine the lack of imagine the lack of manners imagine how much imagine how soulless imagine how much of a prick imagine how much of a dickhead imagine how dark imagine how mean spirit imagine how evil you have to be to be talking bad about somebody when they pass even if you had an issue with them when they were alive the best thing you can do is just shut your fucking mouth. You have nothing good to say. Shut up. 
you're not you're not flipping you're not obliged to give somebody their flowers or to kind of suck up to them because they passed away that's not i don't believe in that but if you don't like but if they passed they passed the best thing you can do to sort of quote unquote move on for the situation is just to be fucking quiet about it but talking about it you know distastefully acting as if they were involved in some sort of drug ring or some sort of nonsense is absolutely disgusting and if anything it shows you up more than them it shows you up more than them because if the if the if the shoe was on the other foot and the roles were reversed i'm pretty sure he wouldn't be out there you know smoking on a whatever pack and pretending to dance on your grave that wouldn't be happening so whoever that person is i don't care what the issue was honestly don't care what the gravity of the situation was it's not worth obviously going and disgracing somebody like that when they passed away now moving on from that it also is needed to say that there needs to be a lot of conversation grown-up conversations around people who go out who partake in this sort of lifestyle like i do who are obsessed with the music who love to DJ, who love to record dig, who love to club, who love to party. There has to be a really grown-up conversation around harm reduction. There needs to be a really grown-up conversation around really doing your due diligence. Because nowadays, I don't feel like there's an excuse for ignorance. There's an excuse for rolling the dice. It's almost similar to like, you know, a guy in his mid thirties getting an STD. That is incredibly embarrassing and incredibly redacted. Like at that kind of age, if you're getting an STD and stuff, that's on you. If you get something that's really terminal, that is really on you because there's all the information you need out there, all of the protection that you need out there to make sure you avoid those situations. If you're willingly going in and raw dogging man randoms and then being surprised at the consequences, you're a fucking idiot. So I feel like there needs to be way more conversation around responsible drug taking and some levels of harm reduction. Now, no, it's not easy. It's easier said than done. A lot of governments, a lot of institutions, a lot of countries out there don't really put harm reduction as the top of their priority list. It's hard to kind of find those places but i think little research little kind of a little bit more research a little bit more um care and time put into where you're buying your stuff vetting your flipping your dealers and that malarkey and making sure the stuff that you get is actually somewhat pure is actually somewhat untainted may go a long way in terms of preventing it or it could be beneficial to just start quitting stuff that could be a new movement, especially with the influx of Gen Z kids. Maybe the older millennia crew need to maybe phase themselves out of the whole drug taking thing and just go back to creating amazing art and basically giving the next generation a platform to build off of, giving them an inspiration to kind of bounce off of, giving them something to aim for. Maybe that's what needs to be done. Maybe guys in their mid 30s, early 40s, early 50s shouldn't be out there caning it every single weekend. Maybe, again, I'm not saying he did, but maybe people within that kind of realm who've established themselves need to take a step back from that and, re and really think, you know what, maybe my, maybe my, um, maybe what I need to do is kind of contribute back to this art form by providing great art, providing great moments, captivating people, inspiring people so that they can go on to create great art as well and service their generation. Because, you know, there's nothing like hitting your first flipping drug when you're like 19, 21, 22, having your first beer at that sort of age or maybe younger. But the older you get, especially in those type of environments, especially if you're an artist, right? The amount of flipping free drinks you get, the amount of times you get offered flipping drugs in exchange of flipping playing somewhere, you know, surely there's, there has to come a time where enough is enough and you shouldn't be doing it at that sort of level, at that sort of stage. Maybe. So harm reduction, maybe some personal accountability in terms of taking that stuff away and not making it the sole purpose of why you go out. But fundamentally, fundamentally, it's just another tragic loss. You know, it really is a tragic loss. I think one of the great things about being an artist is that you get the ability to have to be basically immortal because of the works you create, live far, you know, they're basically... You, your, your art basically outlives you that's why you, that's one of the great things about being an artist in whatever you know field it is but one of the tragic things about being an artist is sometimes you don't get a chance to fulfill your potential you don't get a chance to really you know get to your peak and he was nowhere near silent servant was nowhere near the soft moon was nowhere near hitting their peak that's a really tragic thing about an artist that like you they you know you never know what they were going to create in the future and they never had a chance to create it because their life got cut short so r.i.p silent servant r.i.p um simone ling r.i.p the soft moon um i don't you know i can't imagine what they're going through as a family um friends connected and stuff um the scene the industry people that work with them utterly tragic loss for the scene and yeah man nothing but you know solidarity prayers strength for all those people connected with that group of people and i really do hope lessons are learned from this but 
if you're a guy or a girl out there and you're besmirching this guy's legacy and you're talking ill of the dead you deserve the worst in life you really do deserve the worst in life I'm not gonna say it because don't want to get banned from youtube but if you're somebody out there besmirching some legacy when they pass away even if you had an issue with them you are a big piece of shit the biggest piece of shit that ever existed and far more offensive words than that but we'll end it there r.i.p silent servant r.i.p simone ling gone but not forgotten in r.i.p the soft moon